Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Pastor James Kilby here. Um, I'm hanging out today in a local park um, surrounded by cicadas. Um, they're literally everywhere. And since I've been sitting here just a, a few minutes, they've already attacked my computer and uh, they've attacked my collar. And they're everywhere. Um, their little carcasses are everywhere and the, the live ones are, are chirping from the trees. So today I thought we'd have church here. Uh, I'm the pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship, which is in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, today I thought I'd use our uh, cicadas as maybe a little backdrop uh, for, a, for like maybe a little, little message. So anyway, we've been hearing about it. Uh, I saw uh, some news articles uh, over the last few weeks. One said that there are millions of cicadas coming and i thought i bet it's more than that and then one article said there's there's billions of them I'm like yeah that's probably right it's, you know many states uh are having uh <laughs> having cicadas they're not over all over the world or anywhere but uh different 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 broods of them are all over the world uh, but anyway somebody else said there's trillions of them i don't really know if that's the right number but i'm not sure I do know this, that uh, there's too, too many already because this morning I had one of them, like I said, in my neck and one of them flew into my uh, to my drink the other day and I was trying to have a beverage by myself and here you know there's a, there's a bug in it. So anyway, uh, whether it's millions or billions or trillions, I think there's a few too many on occasion. Anyway, uh, cicadas intrigue me. I'm not sure what it is about it, but what else, you know, like disappears basically for 13 years or 17 years uh, based on different kinds of broods and then they just come back so uh my daughter my granddaughter who are turning 17 uh, here in just a couple months next month uh, when they were little teeny babies we had cicadas and then cicadas leave and then uh they come back 17 years later it's just interesting to me it's intriguing i see i got uh, comments live this morning and maybe i already got one but i got you oh levi good morning my friend uh, you be blessed too uh, it's good to uh, it's good to see you. Um, Levi and I went to high school together, so he's back in Texas, I believe. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, cicadas kind of intrigued me, so I said, "Hey, I'm going to read up on them a little bit." And so uh, it kind of kind of sounds almost biblical, you know. You got millions or, or billions or trillions of cicadas just like dropping in all over the place from that, like seems like nowhere. Sounds like locusts in the Old Testament to me. So uh, anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I was thinking that maybe it sounded biblical. Um, I saw a tree yesterday where, you know, dog ran by and the tree just like swarmed, like the, the bugs just flew out from it and then flew back in. It was like it was alive. Um, but anyway, I did a little reading and locusts really have nothing to do with cicadas. Locusts are actually kind of a cousin of uh, grasshoppers. They're kind of similar to a grasshopper, but a cicada is more like a uh, a cousin of a cricket in the fact that they're both loud, you know, they make a lot of noise. Anyway, um, they are uh, the loudest in the insect world. I found that yesterday on Wikipedia as I Googled cicadas. Cicadas are the loudest bug in the world, the loudest insect, and they can read, some of them can reach up to 120 decibels. So if you're trying to sleep, some people love the sound, some people can't stand it, but 120 decibels would, would be pretty loud. Um, they also sing in a chorus which makes like, you know, the loud and noise even louder. But it's interesting, I read that uh, maybe maybe scientists think that one of the reasons they sing in a chorus is that it makes the diff it makes it difficult for predators to you know pick out individuals. Anyway, I guess they've been around forever. You know, they were written about by Aristotle. Uh, I found that this book. Uh, good morning, Scott. I see Scott's live on here and. Uh, Few other folks are logging on. Um, Aristotle wrote about um, cicadas. He wrote quite a little bit about cicadas, so that was a long time ago. He uh, he said that they were one of his favorite snacks. Well, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to purposely eat a cicada, but hey, uh, Aristotle probably couldn't just go down to Kroger and pick up snacks like we can, right? Anyway, um, cicadas are so interesting to, like I say to me, but they've been interesting to lots of people throughout the years that um, lots of people have written about it, like I said, Aristotle, but also others. And I found out that Apollo, this made up Greek God, supposedly worshiped cicadas. And uh, so I just spent some time reading about that yesterday. So whoever made up Apollo also made up 
the fact that he worshiped cicadas. So I did a survey of some cicadas in my yard. And as it turns out, five out of five cicadas prefer to be worshiped other than being eaten. So that makes sense to me anyway. Um, some people say that cicadas remind them of Jesus. I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. So I read up on that. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, because they've been resurrected from the ground, changed somehow, but still the same. Like, mm, interesting. Um, that they've been, that they're immortal. Someone wrote that they're like Jesus because they're immortal. And I'm like, well, they're not immortal because bugs eat them and, and dogs, I saw my dog eat one. So they're not immortal. Um, but some people say, well, they also are like Jesus because they, per, their progression you know, to a winged creature. And of course, that's the silliness too, because Jesus doesn't have wings. Um, people don't get wings. Angels, some some angels have wings, but most of them don't even have wings. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But it does make me wonder, you know, does the Bible talk about cicadas at all? Are they even mentioned? And so I, I uh, of course, I can search my Bible, cicadas everywhere. I searched my Bible and uh, I couldn't find cicadas in there anywhere. So, uh, so I got on Google and I checked it out, and it and it says that uh, a Washington Post article said that cicadas are in the Bible, and so that intrigued me. So I looked it up and I found uh, the verse that they use, and it was this one, Exodus, uh, Exodus ten five. It says they will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have left after the hail, including every tree that has grown in your fields. I'm like, wow, that sounds crazy. But I'm pretty sure that's not cicadas. Uh, I read the Bible many times. I never heard of cicadas. And so I actually got my Bible out and I looked up that verse. And here's a thing for anybody who has never read the Bible or uh, maybe some people who have, but uh, you always have to check the context. So here's the verses before that verse, <laughs> Exodus 10, 3 through 5. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Uh, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I'll bring locusts into your country tomorrow. Verse 5, they will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have left. Uh, have a, left after the hail, including every tree that has grown in your fields. So there's the context. And uh, no, cicadas are not in the Bible. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, in fact, I don't think cicadas are like Jesus at all. They aren't resurrected. Um, as it turns out, they're alive for these 13 years or 17 years, depending on the, what brood it is. They're alive and they're feeding on uh, the roots of the trees that are around me in this park. Uh, all the time. Um, they aren't immortal at all. Like I said, my dog ate one and they aren't God. They're just bugs. They're just insects. But I did come up with what I think is maybe three ways that possibly cicadas are a little bit like God or a little bit like Jesus. Um, number one, in this sense that they prune mature trees, they prune mature, mature trees. So once they come out of the ground, uh, they go up into the tree uh, that they were underneath and they begin to eat away at the leaves and whatnot. And so pruning is a good thing, right? Uh, Jesus said in uh, John 15, 2, that he, God, cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So that's my, uh, at least one way that I say that, uh, Maybe cicadas are a little bit like Jesus. There's another one that I think that uh, is maybe appropriate, and that is that uh, they they cultivate the ground. So I read that cicadas are underneath uh, they're underneath the ground. They're feeding and uh, eating around on the roots around a tree, uh, but they're really no danger to the tree. In fact, because they're digging around all the time, they're cultivating the ground, which made me think, hey, wait, that's a little bit like God. And uh, then I printed out the parable of the sower. Let me just read just a couple of the poignant parts in this. It says that Jesus told them many things in parables uh, like this. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where he didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. 
Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. And Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. So, of course, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying. And if you read in Matthew 13, uh, he later goes on and explains it to them. And here's the explanation. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. And when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed that falls or falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. And so what Jesus is saying is very simple, that the, that the ground is the heart of the person. And the heart needs to be cultivated. It needs to be, the ground needs to be plowed in someone's heart. It needs to be aerated so that when the word comes, it can fall in and, uh, and it can grow and, of course, produce a crop. And I'm sure many of you have heard of the parable of the sower. I think in that sense, uh, maybe, you know, cicadas are a little bit like God in that sense. Um, and then I got on uh, my Facebook last night and I said, hey, I need a third point. And I have to give this to uh, Jerry and Alita Heard, who reached out to me and said, hey, they, they're also like God in the sense that they're all around us all the time, uh, even though maybe some people wouldn't, most people even maybe wouldn't even notice. And I think that's true. And so I dug up a verse, I think, that uh, kind of makes that stand out, at least to me, a few verses. Acts 17, 24 through 27. The God who made the world and everything in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, and he does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served, and he is not served by human hands, uh, as if he needed anything. Uh, rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Uh, from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, um, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. And here's the one, though he is not far from any one of us. And he certainly isn't far uh, from any one of us. Hey, listen, I know it's uh, just a little silliness sitting out here in the park being attacked by bugs. But hopefully it'll make you think today that, uh, you know, it's not a surprise that cicadas come back uh, every 13, 17 years. Certainly, we know that now. Uh, scientists know it. But nothing is a surprise to God. God has never had an aha moment. Uh, he's behind all of it. He makes all of us. He assigns us to our place in time, uh, an invention of himself, time even. And he says to us, I am here. I am close by. And, of course, we know the gospel of Jesus Christ is that God so loved the world that he made, that he sent his only son, but we were sinners and we fell away, uh, that we could be saved through the sacrificial death of his one and only son, Jesus, who, of course, is the Christ, the Messiah. And listen, if you listen to me today, uh, if you are uh, inclined to do so, if you're a member of our church or uh, just get this and you want to help with any of our ministries, uh, please do. We'd love to have your help. We have giving options. Uh, just hit our website, harvestate.org or, or uh, Venmo Harvest Christian. You can text to give or you can uh, email a, a check to the church or email. You can mail a check to the church. But either way, hey, if you get a chance, would you mind just reaching up and liking uh, this message? And maybe uh, if it moved you, share it with somebody. Or uh, if you're on my YouTube channel, subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever there's a new message coming up. And of course, every Sunday there'll be one, and, and sometimes there's other ones. And you can also get my daily devotional on our uh, Facebook page. It's uh, Harvest Christian Fellowship Dayton. Send out a daily devotional uh, five days a week, and sometimes even more. And then if you uh, have a moment and you want to reach out to me personally, please take a chance to, uh, to uh, email me and, and send me a question, uh, and I'd love to hear it. 
uh, and I always answer them as well. Uh, it's a beautiful day, so uh, I'm going to go hang out with some friends, and I hope you do as well. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.